Hi everyone, my name is Rainer. Welcome to my channel Rainier Books. Guten Abend and Willkommen, as usual. Today I'm going to give you a review of my current read, the book that I just finished yesterday. It is Jenny Offel's Weather. So, weather is something that affects all of us, so without further ado, let's get started. Weather 1. And the weather today is beautiful here in uh, Westertorp, Sweden. I can turn the camera a little around to show you the weather. The, it's blue sky with some white clouds. It's so beautiful up there over the houses here on Terengvägen. It's a beautiful day. And lots of people out in the park here. They are living their lives. They are playing with their children, playing with other people's children when they work with children in preschools and they are thinking about what dinner to cook for tonight for the family and things like that, you know, and they're thinking about their Uncle Mary and their Uncle... not that their Uncle Mary, they're thinking about their Aunt Mary and their Uncle Paul, that's what I wanted to say and maybe the troubles that they have with their brother Sue and their... okay, I, I don't get it with their brother Sue and their, their sister Mike um, you know what I mean, the daily life that goes on and on and on. And the same thing happens in the book Weather by, Je uh, by Jenny Offill with uh, the main character. The main character is Lizzie. She's a librarian without a university degree, working at a college somewhere in New York City, I guess. And she's living her life with her husband um, Ben and her son Eli to get it right in a place that people little despectively call, uh, unrespectfully call Little Pakistan because there are quite many uh, immigrants from Pakistan and Bangladesh. Little Pakistan can be located pretty well actually to uh, a street in New York and Brooklyn. I looked it up on the internet. Google helps us all the time. Uh, it's uh, an avenue called uh, Coney Island Avenue in New York. That's Little Pakistan. And that's where she lives with her family. She has a neighbor, Mrs. Kovinsky, who seems to tend toward the new president that's going to be elected in the course of the things happening in the novel. There are not so many things happening in weather, which is, um, I forgot to mention that when I started, uh, nominated for this year's shortlist. It's on the shortlist for the International Women's Prize that is going to be handed out, I think, in September this year. And it's the third novel that I've read on this list, on the shortlist. I also read, uh, as you might know, Angie Cruz's Dominicana and Bernadine Evaristo's Girl, Woman, Other. And I'm not going to read the two other books that are on the shortlist. That is Hamnet and I think it's Hilary Mantel's uh, new novel. Uh, I maybe tell you that why I'm not reading that in a different um, video. So this is uh, a some stream of consciousness novel more mostly where Lizzie describes how things go in her life and how she lives um, while climate change and maybe the irreversibility of it are approaching more and more until it's too late to do anything against it anymore. Well, my number one fear is the acceleration of days. No such thing supposedly, but I swear I can feel it. Of course, a day has 24 hours. It has 1,440 minutes and I think some blah blah blah. 70,000 something uh, seconds, but uh, I can agree with Lizzie because the older I get, the more I think at times at least that time is rushing by faster than it did when I was a child or when I was a juvenile. So uh, another quote from the novel. My main bad decision is spending too much time traveling to being a fake shrink while ignoring the people I live with. Lately it's my mother I'm on the phone with every evening. Lizzie she says when she calls, Lizzie can you spare a minute? And so Lizzie works like a fake shrink and appoint her husband says to her, if you were a real shrink, we would be rich. Um, one of the factual things that, many factual things that uh, Jenny Offel has researched for the book and which also gives resemblances to climate change, a quote from a speech by Winston Churchill. In 1934, Churchill gave a speech to the Commons to describe, attempting to describe the ruinous effects an air raid would have on the city of London. He was hoping such images would dev of devastation would force even the most optimistic among them to consider what would happen if bomb r bombs would rain down from the sky, would rain from the sky. The details were provided by, to him, he said, by persons who are acquainted with the science and 
Of course, there are resemblances. We always get details um, by people who are acquainted with the science, but we don't react to them very much. There's so much more that uh, Ophel has researched, and some of the things are really funny, like, for example, that many super rich people buy uh, doomsday houses and real estate in New Zealand um, to go to New Zealand when uh, climate in most parts of the world is too bad. But uh, she comes to the conclusion, um, if she gets another child, she wouldn't be able to name it sex fruit in New Zealand. So she says, no, New Zealand is not the right thing for me. Um, those are the questions sometimes that librarians get asked, aren't they? And Lizzie is a librarian. A quote that almost sums up the whole novel is made by her mentor, uh, Sylvia. She says to Lizzie, uh, of course the world continues to end, Sylvia says, then gets off the phone to water the garden. That's, that's really funny. That's sad at the same time and it's so true uh, this is actually the last quote which really sums up the, bo the, the book in a, in a beautiful way i think the content of the book you know the song it's the end of the world as we know it it's the end of the world as we know it it's the end of the world as we know it and i feel fine that actually reminded me of that song as well the song by rem uh, from Athens, Georgia, from their 1987 album Document. Uh, that's not bad either, isn't it? By the way, I read that the online downloads of that song, It's the End of the World as We Know It, by REM, have increased with 187% since the beginning of our beautiful pandemic. Weather is something that we all should be worried about. It, it affects us today with horrible fires each and every year. If you look what happened in Australia with the horrible Australian bushfires that killed one half, 500 million, half a billion animals in Australia were killed in those fires. I remember the fire in California, uh, I think two years ago. I was, yeah, it was two years ago because in 2017 I was in California traveling on the uh, coastal starlight from San Francisco to Portland. And we were pretty close to a place called Paradise in Cal Northern California. And this little town, Paradise, burned down in 2018 completely uh, because of the great fires. We face annihilation, that's what we do. And large parts of the planet, planet are going to be uninhabitable. But all we do is carrying on with our lives. Lizzie gets more and more scared, wonders where she can go to save herself and her family. Awful doesn't give an answer, and she doesn't have one, and she doesn't need to have an answer. She just gives us a mirror to look in, a mirror that we are all living our lives um, where the, um, on the edge somewhere. Um, of a big catastrophe which is coming in 20, 40, 30, 40 years. And you can compare it to the pandemic. Yes, you can, because climate change is, is not something that you say the catastrophe will happen from May 1, 2024 onwards. It will happen somehow, and it comes very slowly. People have said all the time that pandemics will come. There will be a huge global pandemic that will kill millions of people. Now we have it, because, and we didn't believe the scientists. The politicians didn't believe the scientists, and they still don't if you look, for example, at some presidents in Brazil or in the United States. So this is a huge problem that we don't address. Where can change come from? Where can real change come from? The novel ends with a very interesting scene that is uh, Ben and Lizzie, uh, the couple, the married couple, lying in bed. Ben is reading a novel about a distant war, uh, distant in place and distant in time. Suddenly Lizzie hears gunshots outside and she's, well, I guess she's a little scared. And, but her husband says, no, it's just walnuts falling on the roof of our house. And the last sentence of the book is, the core delusion is that I am here and you are there. That's the core delusion. And so we keep on living our lives. And you actually should read Weather because it's really a thought wakening book. Is that possible to say in English? Uh, it's, it's a good book. It wasn't really my piece of cake. I, I read it and I think I have great pleasure in thinking about many of the things that Awful touches here. But I didn't think that every um, of her vignettes, every one of her vignettes is really perfect or good and I think in a, such a short text of about 200 pages it's very important that you are not making any mistakes that, and, and some of the vignettes are not that good some vignettes are brilliant I don't say that I don't doubt that and I think that probably weather has good chances to win uh, the women's prize because of its experimental way of writing um, 
you should read it definitely uh, give it a try and tell me in the comments below what you thought about it and what you do to prevent climate change and where your doomstead is on this planet coming closer to the end of this video that was the, my review of weather by Jenny Offal uh, currently I'm reading two uh, currently I'm reading two other books I started reading Melissa and Peter Peterson's Vera Violet which is a story about poor uh, teenagers, I would say, in Lumbertown in Washington State in the United States. And the second book that I have almost finished, I think I will finish it tomorrow, is a brilliant book. I can say that already, but I will review it separately. It's Surviving Autocracy by Masha Gessen about, uh, well, about the autocracy that the United States are about to become. This was all for today. This was all for today. I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for commenting on it, what you thought about weather and what your next read is, what your current read is. And I see you very soon on this channel on probably on Saturday or Sunday with a video with my TBR of July, the books I'm planning to read in the month of July that has just started. And I also will make a video about summer books. I also will make a video, oh my God, about releases in July. Uh, the, my picks of July month's releases, which is going to be very interesting because I already found like six or seven very interesting books that you should or might read during the summer. Thank you very much for watching. Be safe. I got as always. Bye bye. See you soon.